Hi everyone, meteorologist Ryan Weekman here, joining you for our latest edition. It's our Weather Hangout Kids edition. It's so good to see all of you here. We're doing this once a week. It's our kind of substitution, if you will, with all the changes that have been going on. Of course, we love this time of the year. Spring is usually when we get out to all the classes. We talk about storms and severe weather and all that stuff. Things have obviously changed this year, so we wanted to bring the weather lesson to you, and we're so happy that you're joining us. You can get things started off here. Type in the comments section. Let us know maybe what class you're representing, what school district maybe you want me to give a shout out to, whatever here, and we'll be sure to do that as well. We've got some friends that are already joining us and saying hello. It's good to see you here. This week's edition Let's review kind of what we've done already. We've talked about thunderstorms. We've talked about tornadoes, right? Two of some of the big topics of weather. Kids usually like those. You can watch those episodes. We still have them here on our WTOL 11 YouTube page. You can watch that after this one. We said, what would be another good topic? We thought, hmm, one of the questions we get a lot from kids, especially that are interested in weather, is... What does it take to become a meteorologist if you want to be on TV? And so we wanted to give an episode dedicated to that question. So over the course of the next few minutes here, number one, we're going to answer your questions. And if you're just tuning in, and I see a lot of you just now joining in, make sure that you type in the comment section here in the chat. I'll give your school district a shout out like Kenna, who's at Springfield Local. Good to see you. Glad that you're in here. We've got Jody saying shout out to Thomas and Adriana. They're in Swanton Elementary. They're, le they're learning hard with mom. So I will give a shout out to Jody too, mom. Learning hard. That's what we like here. We're all learning, I think. Connor, Washington Local. So we've got several school districts. I'm so happy that you guys are able to join us here for our Weather Hangout Kids edition. I'm going to show you some behind the scene photos, kind of what our TV studio looks like. And then I'm also going to talk about some of the tools that we use. How do we forecast the weather? We're going to talk about that and, of course, like I said, answer any of your questions here as well. We've got uh, Fallen Timbers Middle School. We can give a shout-out. We can do that as well. Miss Burke at Discovery. We've got Anthony Wayne. We've got John Birchfield, who's still stuck spinning his wheels in Sylvania schools. He'll get out of there someday. Jessica is, uh, or excuse me, Jessica's the account, Wyatt is the student from Pike Delta York. I'm so glad that you're here. Rowan is here, he's homeschooled. We've got uh, Paige, who's 10 years old from White House Primary. Good to see you. We've got uh, Landon from Perrysburg, our first yellow jacket joining us here. Uh, all the way over in Tenora giving a shout out. Uh, let's say uh, Glendale Fileback uh, Elementary. I've got my, my shirt, I've still got, I went uh, to a school talk there a couple years ago. I got one of those big alligator shirts. I still like to wear that thing. Still fits somehow. Uh, we've got another Anthony Wayne, Fallen Timbers, shout out. Uh, Bellevue High School. Hey, our furthest east school that we have so far. If you're just joining in, I like to start off giving shout outs here. I'm so glad that you students and parents are joining us here. We know how valuable that time is, and we're very happy that you're able to spend a little slice of it with us. We've already covered twisters. We've already covered uh, thunderstorms. And if that's piqued the interest in your students out there, we thought the next logical topic might be, what uh, makes a meteorologist? Why don't you guys go ahead and answer that? You can either talk out loud. What do you think it means to be a meteorologist? Or you can type it in the comments section as well if your parents are helping you out or if you're good at typing there. I'll give some more shout outs while you think about it or you give the answer. What does it mean to be a meteorologist? Uh, give some more shout outs here. Fallen Tempers. We've got uh, Cameron and Sadie at Bellevue High School. We've got Addie uh, from uh, uh, Addie and Akakia from Perrysburg. We've got Finley City Schools. Uh, Barnesville Schools. Uh, we've got uh, Dane and Jessa. They're homeschooled in Toledo. Uh, Aiden is a homeschooler in Sylvania. I'm so happy that you're joining us here. Mommy Hopewell Loudon. There's the first time I've been able to say that. And uh, Quinn, Tommy, and Colby are watching from Perrysburg. Good to see you guys there, the Rurucka family. All right, so what does it mean? Have you answered that question yet? What does it mean to be a meteorologist? 
most of you probably said, right? To forecast or to tell us what the weather is like outside. That's right, to predict the weather. Sounds like an easy answer, but how do you do that? How do you predict the weather? Because what, what that means is you have to predict the future. Do you think predicting the future is easy or hard? What do you think? Is it easy or hard? It's pretty hard, isn't it? Okay, if, now if you were being silly out there and you said predicting the future is easy, here's what I want you to do. In the comment section, I want you to type in what the winning lottery numbers are going to be tonight. Can you do that for me? I'd be a really happy guy if you could do that. <laughs> yeah, predicting the weather in the future is hard. We've got Kenwood Elementary giving a shout out there. Always love it when my bobcats are joining in here. Uh, Robert said, Connor said meteorology is to study the weather. Exactly right. Looks like a lot of smart students out there to study the weather is what we're talking about. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to switch it over here. I'm going to show you what it looks like from inside our television studio. So you can see there's a number of us. We've already had uh, John Birchfield, who is just in here, a graduate of Sylvania schools. He's on the left side of your screen there. He's working our computers. Chief Meteorologist Robert Shields is in the background there. He's at the green screen. I'm gonna talk about all of this. And that's me. Uh, you get my backside. I'm sorry. I'm at the uh, what we call the weather bridge. This was a day back, I believe, in May or June this summer. It was actually John's first day on the job at WTOL 11, and we had a series of tornado warnings. Meteorologist Chris Vickers, of course, he works very early in the mornings, but he was at home helping with emails, typing up things for our website and other things. So he basically never sleeps. It takes a team of meteorologists to watch what goes on 24-7 with the weather because the weather never stops, right? So just to give you an idea, this is an all-hands-on-deck sort of operation. When we're dealing with severe weather, we have everybody that we can get doing uh, something here. Robert, of course, is on TV at this point. He's tracking the storm and a potential tornado and showing us with a green screen why, uh, where it's going. Now, how many of you have ever stood in front of a green screen before? Have any of you ever, do you, maybe you have one at your school? Um, I think Imagination Station still has their green screen set up as well. Um, and there's other ways that you can uh, be in front of a green screen as well. How many of you, have you ever done that before? It's kind of hard, isn't it? Everything's kind of backwards from what you would think, but you get used to it pretty quickly. One of the questions I get from parents a lot is, does it always have to be green? Oh, hold on. I have to give a shout out here. Kenna says, my mom wants a shout out for teaching her students at Garfield Elementary. There you go. There's a shout out for you. Um, when we're looking at what's going on on the weather and trying to do it on the green screen, again, one of the number one questions we get from parents is, does it have to be green? And the answer is no. It can be almost any color that you want, but green tends to be the easiest for our computer operators, our engineers behind the scenes to be able to make things look as good as possible um, on TV. If you guys ever get the chance to go in front of a green screen, because I see a lot of you saying, nope, I've never been in front of one before, I would highly recommend it. It's a really cool experience. John is there just to give you a rundown of exactly what's going on. He's talking to the National Weather Service. That's another branch of weather that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, but they are the ones who actually issue those tornado watches and warnings and get into all of that. And I'm at the front there working on building graphics and helping Robert at the green screen. Let me ask you this question here. What kind of tools do you think that we use to forecast the weather. Can you guys say it out loud or you can type it in the comments section. I'll give some shout outs here. What kind of tools do we use? Hmm. Because we have to know what's going on right now before you can predict into the future, right? There's no way you could know what's going to happen in the future if you don't know what's happening right now. So what kind of tools do you think do we use to help forecast into the future. Janice is ask, asking, give a shout out to Bryan Elementary. All right, there's a shout out out in Williams County for you. Chase in Rossford says he tried the green screen at Imagination Station. Evan is asking, can you give a shout out to Miss uh, Fritch from Shoreland Elementary? I sure can. 
Uh, Riley just joined in, and he's homeschooled too. Well, Riley, I am so happy that you're joining us here and giving a little slice of your day. The question I'm asking right now is, what type of tools do you think that we use to forecast the weather? Hmm? All right, let's see. I think we're going to get some answers coming in here pretty quick. It takes a little second sometimes for that to come in, but let's just put up a little graphic that we have here. Uh, Connor says satellites. Exactly right. Look, that's a big picture right there. Katrina says anemometer. Um, we have uh, Tenora saying uh, radar. We've got computers. Uh, Rowan says cameras. Yeah, we need cameras to, that's, that's the communication side of it, right? That's where people are talking about the weather. Uh, let's see, we've got thermometers. Yeah, we've got thermometers here. I put together a graphic that kind of encompasses some of the big tools that we use to help forecast the weather. And I'm going to talk about each one of these a little bit here in just a moment. But I want to keep ans uh, giving shout outs to the kids that are answering the question. So we've got satellites. Uh, we've got Alex from Crim Elementary, my alma mater down in Bowling Green. I am so glad, Alex, that you are joining us. That's really exciting. Uh, we've got lots of people saying satellites. Okay, we've got satellites. Look at the picture on your screen right here. Um, satellites are one of them. What are other things that you see on the screen here that we use to help forecast the weather. Um, being asked to please give a shout out to Miss Burke, I would be happy to give a shout out to Miss Burke. Lisa said, weather balloons, yes. Uh, so weather balloons, that's what the big thing you see at the bottom of your screen. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, we've got computer models. Yes, we use high-speed computers to help forecast the weather. Uh, we've got radars, exactly right. Andy, one of our loyal followers, thank you very much for being with us, Andy. And radars help tell exactly what's going on in the atmosphere. Uh, we've got radios. We do use weather radios, again, as a communication device to help us tell exactly what's going on and get that word out to people in the community. Uh, we've got Doppler radars. Yep. Good job, you guys. I think we've nailed just about all of them. Do you see that bottom one on the left-hand side, the other side from the weather balloons? That's a weather station, and you guys have done a good job of naming many of the features that are on there as well. So let's go through these really quickly, all right? So at the top of your screen, that's the satellites, right? There's two types of satellites. One, it goes around the globe, and it snaps pictures as it kind of goes. Those aren't terribly useful when it comes to weather. What we typically use are what are known as geosynchronous satellites. And what that means is they sit in the same spot above the Earth and they keep taking pictures. And what that allows us to do is watch how weather moves from one single position. So satellites is a really big one that we use. A lot of you commented and said weather balloons. Yes, weather balloons are a big way to do that. I want to give a shout out here. Let's see, uh, Miss Mearing, Miss Yoder, and Miss uh, Fatsinger. Those are your teachers. Very good. I'm glad to give those teachers a shout out. Hopefully that they're watching out there as well. So weather balloons are launched from different places all around the globe twice per day. And what they're filled with is hydrogen. And that allows them to go way up high into the atmosphere and attach to them almost like a little shoebox. That lady in the blue shirt down there, she's carrying it. It has weather instruments in it. And it tells us wind speed, direction, temperature, all that good stuff. And that information goes into our supercomputers. That's the middle screen there it simply would be impossible for us to accurately and reliably predict the future without modern day supercomputers. The fact is it just takes too much math, science, and physics for any human to do the proper calculations to figure out what the weather is actually going to be without the help of supercomputers. That is not to say that weather models and supercomputers do the job for us. It's just that they are a strong aid in the same way that well, we wouldn't be able to see what's going on from outer space without satellites, right? But it's up to us as the meteorologists to actually interpret that data. 
Um, hey, so what you guys are going to be able to do here as well is look down here at the bottom of our screen here in the chat section. Look just above it in the description. I've put some great links in here for you. It's going to allow you to do all sorts of really cool stuff. You can become a junior meteorologist. There's classes that you can take to become a certified junior meteorologist. There's experiments you're going to be able to do like track the different types of clouds over the next few days. That allows you to be a junior meteorologist. We've got coloring pages for the younger kids and all sorts of other games. So check out the links below and you're going to be able to see that. Um, oh, I have to give another shout out because I give a shout out to Miss Burke. Uh, I have to give a shout out here. I hope I don't get the name wrong. Miss Leveletti. Miss Leveletti, I hope that's the right name there. Okay, I hope I did it. So the other two things that you see on your screen right here, of course, are Doppler radar. We use that to track where rain and snow and other things are going. And at the bottom of your screen, that's just your typical weather station. What the humidity is, what the temperature is, what the wind speed and direction are as well. All right, I've been doing a lot of talking. Do you guys have questions? I've got a little bit more that I want to talk about as well, but... I want to uh, answer any of your questions, specifically, what does it take to become a meteorologist? I'd love to hear your questions, and I'll do my best to answer them while we're kind of hanging out right here. Uh, I got a question here. This is a good one. It says, how do they capture the balloons when they land, those weather balloons? That is a good question. The answer is the majority of them don't get captured. They pop high up in the atmosphere, and then those sensors start to fall to the ground. A parachute comes out of them, and when that parachute lands, of course, um, you can pick it up. There's a mailing address on it, and you can ship it back to the National Weather Service. But many times they fall into open waters and other things like that, and they're just not recovered. Um, let's see. Um, oh, some people are asking, how do you catch the balloons? Yeah, you don't catch the balloons. They just fall on the land somewhere. Um, you never know if the wind direction is just right. Maybe someday you'll find a weather balloon in your backyard. Well, you wouldn't get the balloon, but you'd get the parachute and the weather pack that's on top of it. Um, shout out to Miss uh, Pavink. Uh, I want to get this right. Pinkeva. And let's see. Mr. Tongado. I hope that's right. I'm sorry. I'm very bad at saying names, so I apologize for that. Jeremy is asking, how long do you go to school to become a weatherman? Fantastic question. So you have to go through elementary school, high school, and then you have to go to college, typically for four years to become a degreed meteorologist. Now, there's many different paths you can take from there, and that kind of segues us very nicely into the next part of what I wanted to talk about, which is... What kind of job can you get as a meteorologist? Because you guys see us on TV, right? On Channel 11. I get it. You guys see us. Uh, Chase from Rossford says, what is your college degree in? My college degree is a Bachelor of Arts and Science in Meteorology. I minored in broadcasting. And I like to say this because it was a frustrating time in college. I was one class away from minoring in mathematics. You have to do a lot of math. Can you guys answer any other subjects? What do you think? Type it in the chat section here. What other subjects do you think you have to do pretty good at if you want to try to get a degree in meteorology? Uh, Ken is asking, how many years of schooling do you have to go do for meteorology? Yep, about four years of college. Now, there's people who go more than four years in college. If they want to study really advanced things, and maybe they're right on the leading edge of trying to figure out new things with meteorology, you can go get your master's. That would take another few years. You can even get a PhD in it, and you can teach in colleges. Of course, that takes a lot more schooling than just the four years to become a basic meteorologist. Um, let's see. Uh, why did you want to become a meteorologist? Kenny, you are asking some really, really good questions. Uh, I wanted to be a meteorologist because I was curious. One of my favorite stories to tell, and then I'm going to give some shout outs for the subjects that you guys are listing right here. What subjects do you think it takes to be good at meteorology? I, when I was a kid, kindergarten, first grade, I was actually afraid of the weather, specifically thunderstorms. Does that ever happen to you guys? You, thunderstorms, it gets dark outside, there's thunder, there's lightning. I just didn't like it. Well, one day I went to my teachers and I said, what's going on with this weather? Like, I, I just don't get it. So my teachers, 
took me to our library in our school, and I was able to check out books about the weather. And it turns out I actually really wasn't afraid of the weather. I was afraid of what I didn't know about the weather. And so reading books about the weather turned from something I was afraid of to something I was actually kind of curious about. And by the time I was in fourth grade, weather went from something I was sometimes afraid of to something that I thought was super cool. And I thought being a meteorologist on TV, being that weather person, could be the, one of the coolest jobs out there. So I've known I wanted to do this job since I was about in fourth grade. Are there any jobs you guys know that you want to do or maybe think you want to do when you get older? Type it in there. I'll give some shout outs. Let's give some more shout outs here to questions that you guys answered earlier. What classes do you think you got to be really good at to be a meteorologist? We got science. Yep. Math. Yep. Geometry or physics. You better believe it. What about public speaking? Probably better be pretty good at that, right? Math was something I would always struggle at. I'll tell you that. It might seem silly, right? Somebody who had to take so much math in college. But it was a hard subject for me. There were times when I really, really struggled with it. But I knew I wanted to be a meteorologist. And so I'm really happy I worked hard and was able to get through and make it happen. You guys are asking some great questions. Uh, one of you says, I want to be a teacher. Some of you say, uh, pianist. Cool, that'd be a fun job. I've always wanted to be able to learn to play the piano. Kenneth says, work at Chick-fil-A. Mm, Chick-fil-A. Heather, I want to be a teacher. Aiden wants to be a policeman. Yes, Aiden, good job. We need police officers. They're going to help us out big time. Uh, basketball player, okay. We've got um, others are listing some subjects that they think would be really good and strong to be uh, knowledgeable about to become a meteorologist. Um, I want to be a teacher when I grow up or an artist or a singer. Awesome. That's what I love to hear. I'm so happy to read about some of the things that you guys want to be when you get older. Just know this, when it comes to meteorology, you guys see us on TV almost every day, right? We give the forecast. There are so many other types of meteorologists that are out there. There are meteorologists to help airplanes. You guys ever flown on an airplane? You feel that turbulence, that bumping up and down? There are meteorologists with the airline companies who specifically try to route planes around bad weather. I have a map up here right now. This is the National Weather Service. These are all the different offices across the country. And what these meteorologists do is they help forecast the weather on an official basis for the U.S. government. They issue watches and warnings when bad weather is coming in. And of course, we have a very good working relationship with these meteorologists from different parts of the country. So we understand the weather that's coming in for our way. Uh, Ronan wants to be a meteorologist. Uh, Alexa wanted to be, uh, Alexandra wanted to be a teacher there. Uh, uh, want to be an electrician. That's really exciting. Um... Abel says, I want to be a meteorologist when I grow up, but I'm 11. Yeah, you got a little time there to study. <laughs> so there are different types of jobs that you can do. In fact, nine out of every 10 meteorologists in the country are not on TV. Weather plays such an important role in all sorts of different things that meteorologists are needed across different things, from trucking companies to airplanes like I was talking about. There's all sorts of different things that you can do when you become a meteorologist. So I think it's a really fun job. Of course, I get to be on TV. That's a really fun part of this as well. I'm also wearing a special tie today. So this one has different weather symbols on it. So when we look at our weather maps, some of these mean different things. So this one tells us the wind speed and direction right there. It looks like it's about 75 knots out of the west. Uh, this one is fog. Uh, let's see, we got some snow over here. Uh, let's see, oh, this is a good one. Thunderstorm. We've got heavy, where is it at? Uh, heavy rain right there. There's all sorts of different symbols that are on there. Uh, Aaron wants me to give a shout out to Miss Yunkers over in Napoleon. Good to see you. Dean wants to be a policeman. That is so awesome. All right, here's what's going to happen. Our weather hangout here is coming to a close. I've had so much fun hanging out with you guys today. What you can do if you want to keep geeking out about the weather, look in the description below the video here. I've included some links so you guys can play some interactive games. 
Go ahead and play them with your parents here. I think you'll find that a lot of them are pretty fun. If you want to geek out more about thunderstorms or tornadoes, go back. You can check out our other Weather Hangout Kids Edition videos, and you're going to be able to see those as well. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. I've had a blast. And remember, we're going to keep doing these every Thursday at 11 a.m. right here on our WTOL 11 YouTube page. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Take care.